Hello, and welcome to Insider Insights. I'm Emma Wegner, Associate Educator in Public Programs and Creative Practice at the Met. In this series, we're providing closer looks at objects from the collection and exhibitions, as well as a glimpse behind the scenes of the work of Met experts who interpret and care for the collection. Today, we're joined by my colleague, Christina Balafet Carr, Conservator in Textiles Conservation. Christina will discuss how advanced imaging techniques like x-rays and microscopy help tell the stories of textiles in the Met collection. She will also discuss how the Met's Department of Textile Conservation uses new scientific discoveries to understand historic textiles. Thanks so much for joining us today, Christina. Thank you so much for inviting me, Emma. The Department of Textile Conservation is responsible for preservation, conservation, technical study and research of the museum's collection of approximately 36,000 textiles in 12 curatorial departments. It's an encyclopedic collection repre representing a range of categories. 13 professionals with diverse areas of expertise, as well as fellows, interns and volunteers comprise the department. I am a longtime conservator in the department and have worked with textiles from most curatorial departments, coordinating the installation of numerous exhibitions. And I have been particularly interested in seamlessly integrating digital technology and traditional museum practices. The enabling factors in the evolution of material culture, especially with respect to textiles, can become obscured or misinterpreted with the passing of time. Accounts of social and economic production realities contemporary to the time and place of manufacture help clarify conditions and opportunities at a particular point in history. However, the physical object itself carries unique core information independent of historical interpretation. Objects convey information and might have been created expressly to convey information relevant to a specific time and culture. Written accounts regarding material culture when removed from one's own experience can place an object in historical context but the object itself is no longer the primary focus. Systematic study, documentation and scientific investigation is integral to our work as conservators. Advanced imaging combined with analytical techniques such as microscopy and x-radiography permit the visual deconstruction of an object. The process itself of capturing images is an opportunity to focus on isolated physical qualities, core characteristics, both visible and invisible. It is a way of thinking. The sorting, manipulating, comparing, and recomparing of images can result in unexpected insights. This multifaceted examination compensates for losses in overall appearance, promoting a deeper understanding of this 14th century embroidery and how it might be best preserved and enhanced. Now the microscope offers a primary entry point for understanding the materials, techniques, past history and current condition of a textile. The addition to our compound microscope of a digital camera tethered to a computer with image processing software was a game changer. In the past, this intimate view was limited to the individual who happened to have access to both microscope and textile. Images on a monitor, either live or recorded, can make external what is an internal nonverbal understanding. Close examination with the aid of a microscope reveals more than fiber type and weave structure. On the left, you see needle holes where the silk embroidery floss has deteriorated and faint remains of the original pink thread. On the right, comparison of front and back shows that the original colors are well preserved. Silk embroidery on linen plain weave comes alive when you see the complexity of the interacting elements in this well preserved 17th century Torah binder. Textiles are the result of a series of actions from raw material to finished product. Both front and back in the analysis of weave structure can invoke this process. 
while clarifying how the design is, is achieved. Close examination can provide a window into the past and even this time-worn 17th century fragment becomes three-dimensional. While preparing a group of early modern English embroideries for exhibition, I was struck by the power of close examination under magnification to deliver visual information about an object as a whole. Objects are created at a point in time of a particular culture, but they tend to outlive their initial use. They can gain or lose significance as they slip or because they slip from the commonality of a material culture. Gloves were prestigious gifts in 16th and 17th century England, and they could be quite lavishly worked. They became popular again in the 19th century as costume accessories for fancy dress occasions, which may be what took a toll on these embroidered gauntlets. Close examination can clarify fabrication by suggesting a logical sequence of events. It also allows a bit of freedom for more oblique thinking. Each element can be distinguished from the composition and in its abstracted form, deliver a profound impression. After focusing on one square centimeter of this richly worked and much deteriorated gauntlet, I found myself continually returning to the overall embroidery with the effects of the multiple reflective planes of the stunning metal thread work embedded in my mind. These metal threads are created with a strip of silver or silver gilt wrapped around a silk core. Often silver strip is wrapped on a white core and silver gilt around a yellow core. Experiencing light and color under magnification can fill the mind's eye with information that alters perceptions of the object as a whole. Visual information can provide an intimate view of core characteristics, which may resist linear organization, but are absorbed by our minds in a subliminal fashion. Reflectivity, volume, weight, contour can all be identified, measured, and documented without conveying the changeable interactions that occur in a three-dimensional object. These details, when viewed in a backlit format, gain a dimensional quality. X-rays long used for analytical purposes reveal a compelling alternate view. The white areas of the X-ray on the right are the silver elements of the embroidery, the full bling originally intended. This early 17th century English purse was worked with virtuosity, most likely in a professional workshop. Its sumptuous appearance is the result of the interplay of color triggered by the multiple angles of the reflective surfaces. Up to four colors were used in the silk core of these metal threads. The array of colors highlighted by the reflective surfaces demonstrates the range of effects possible with a seemingly limited palette. This high quality silver has remained smooth and reflective even after considerable manipulation. Insects were a favorite motif in 17th century English embroideries. Detached needlework adds depth and dimension to the wings of this butterfly, which appear to float in the air when magnified 100 times. Feathers were often used in the depiction of insects, and although damaged, these feathers retain the iridescence common to many insects. Even the silk lining of this purse contributes to the overall effect, casting a pink glow from behind the embroidery. Photomicrographs can help reveal these qualities, which may not be apparent at even a small distance. This embroidered portrait of Charles I, about six inches in height, retains what is likely its original slightly domed glazing. Images permit a more layered thinking following a path, both visual and conceptual, offered within the object itself. Details such as the highlight of the pupil rendered with a single pass of white silk thread. There is an interplay between embroidery thread and foundation fabric, at times incorporating the white silk satin into the overall composition. 
nuanced use of silk threads creates subtle shading and soft contours. The pattern in the lace edging of the collar is so detailed that it is an almost identifiable pattern. Multiple images ca captured at varying magnifications can help convey the intended dimensionality of the composition. Remains of gilding on the medal of the Order of St. George reveals the high standard of quality in every detail of this embroidered portrait. The sequence and magnification in which images are ordered may vary, each variation delivering a different impression. In this mirror surround, complex materials in a variety of te techniques are employed to create an overall effect. Unexpected devices creating underlying narratives can be isolated and documented at close range, bringing the viewer into close proximity and compensating for the distance that is felt when presented with an unfamiliar object. The embroidered components of this mirror have hidden elements revealed in an X-ray. The overall embroidery in the, in the dress appear uniform, but a closer look shows a skillful masquerading of techniques. The skirt has a metal wire foundation and the embroidery of the bodice and sleeves is on a simple woven fabric. Worked separately, the skirt was secured with red thread to the silk satin foundation fabric. Under magnification, the cut wire is clearly visible following the lines of the underdrawing. And actual seed pearls were used to create the necklace. Wire was used to give shape and add dimension to motifs as seen in the hem of the skirt layered above a meticulously detailed shoe. Careful placing of the silk thread secured and masked the wire in the skirt. Manipulating X-ray images can accent intended highlights as well as reveal hidden structure. The metal thread floral elements that frame the figure would have reflected light highlighting the composition. Assembling visual information requires three-dimensional thinking, sometimes revealing to the observer the maker's hand. Our most important source of information is the textile itself. This needlepoint picture is embroidered with wool and silk threads on a plain weave foundation fabric. Applicate fragments of woven silk create the garments of the figure of God depicted in this narrative. The reverse of a textile can reveal a wealth of information. Much is evident regarding how a textile was made and if it has been repaired or otherwise altered. An x-ray revealed extensive metal thread in the fragments used in the figure of God, two finely woven silks that most likely had a previous life as part of a garment or furnishing fabric. What is not so evident is that the metal threads of the woven fabrics follow the drape of the robe. This would have been quite visible when new, bringing life to the composition. Museum exhibitions require many hands and much thinking. Whether or not accompanied by a printed catalog, exhibitions can bring life to a group of textiles. The exhibition Examining Opulence, a set of Renaissance tapestry cushions, coincided with the major 2014 exhibition Grand Design Peter Cook of Van Alst and Renaissance Tapestries. The small gallery space outside the Rati Textile Center was an ideal venue for a more didactic presentation of these small scale tapestries. Of six Flemish tapestries created circa 1600 depict scenes from the life of Abraham and are contemporary to the monumental tapestries in the Grand Design Exhibition. The more intimate scale of these smaller pieces provided the opportunity to present the materials and techniques of 17th century Flemish tapestry weaving in detail. Their good condition and small size made it possible to exhibit them in freestanding exhibition cases. A thin transparent support attached to the upper edge stabled each of the tapestries, which were then hung from a plexi bar held by plexi rods, leaving both front and back fully visible. This 360 degree presentation was an important aspect of the exhibition. The Abraham and the Angels tapestry, which you see on your right, was exhibited as the viewer would have worked with the warp vertical and the design horizontal. 
Further technical information was included in the object labels on the wall panels. I began this project by examining each tapestry, the subtle and minute details in the face of Sarah, details executed with great skill, caught my attention and began to shape for me an exhibition that would include the extraordinary world of textiles viewed through a lens. On the monitor, you see an area of one square centimeter, which is the area visible at 10 times magnification. Here, this detail is of an area approximately four centimeters by three and a half centimeters. To show an area of this size at the 20 times magnification you see here requires multiple images, which are stitched together in an image processing program. The depth of the loose threads on the back created multiple focal points and many more images were required to create a final image that was completely in focus. These details illustrate joins used in the tapestries, as well as the difference in the reflective qualities of wool and silk. Each presents front and back of a detail measuring under one square centimeter at 20 times magnification. X-rays provided further important technical and visual information. The white areas in this image are the metal threads used to highlight the composition. In particular, the figure of Sarah, the central character in this story. Photomicrographs can reveal the original complex and changing interplay of colors in the now tarnished metal threads. These images are details from Sarah's headscarf and dress. They show front and back of each de detail. This detail is on the back of the tapestry where the surface was more protected. Dye analysis identified cochineal, weld, indigo, and matter. Examples of these dye stuffs were exhibited in a vitrine directly underneath the images of Sarah, showing the great range of color achieved by combining a few dye stuffs, a color range further extended by the inherent qualities of wool and silk. Photomicrographs and X-ray images of the tapestries were included on the wall panels which were roughly the same size and proportions as the actual tapestries. The proximity of the tapestries to the printed images allowed the viewer to go back and forth between distinctly different types of engagement. Examining Opulence continues to have a presence on the Met's website. And to see more Met exhibitions with integrated technical information please visit the Department of Textile Conservation's new landing page on the MEX website. Thank you.